Hi guys and welcome back to the restoration. I'm so excited. Another huge milestone. I get her back on all four wheels. And I'm going to show you how I do that. But first I have to tell you I'm a little disappointed. I bought a new cow and unfortunately she doesn't give any milk. I guess you could say she's an utter failure. Okay, I'm trying to get this pulley off. I've got it frozen and now I'm going to heat that and uh, crank down on it. Heat that with a little propane torch and try to crank down on it and get that thing off of there. Guys, it worked. It popped off. I didn't even heat it. I just threw this in the freezer. This is still freezing cold and um, there's a the bearing and now I'm going to have to get it off of there. This really solves a huge problem of mine. Now I can replace that bad bearing. This is absolutely huge, guys. I was able to put this in the press and press the bearing out. And I got it out. And the, um, the thing is, let's see if there's some light on here. The thing is here on this bearing, I can barely read. I mean, that says SKF. But on the edge, it says something like G007. I've got to figure out what that bearing is and get another one. Okay, my son and I are going to put this pulley. Go ahead and flip it over a little bit so we can see how rusty it is. There we go. And now we're going to put this in the evapor rust. So we'll put that in there. Now we're going to dump the evapor rust in. And after spending the night in evapor rust, that looking marvelous. Clean up there and this thing will be ready to go. Now it's time to clean these up. That's where the purple power comes in. I have to clean the grease and grime off of it before I stick it in the evapor rust. This is a pulley that I had bent taking it off and now I'm trying my best to get it back so I'm using all sorts of techniques to get this baby bent back into shape. Well, just so you know, there's a lot of pulleys I'm working on. There's actually six total pulleys that I'm working on, and that's why you're going to see a lot of pulley work here. Now it's time to try to straighten this up. Got some pretty bad bends in this. So I took a piece of flat stock and ground it to the correct radius and I'm going to try to bang that out as best I can. Alrighty, fresh out of the evapor rust, these things look great. I do see now that the outside was painted. Um, so I'll make sure that the outsides of these get painted and it turned out really really nice and clean um, so now I just got to get these things painted and prepped and painted and then put back on there are two of these types of bully, uh, pulleys on here and this one I've been banging trying to get back into shape and then it hit me I can drill these rivets out and really get in there get this because I would like to put in a sandblaster but there's a seal bearing that I'm worried about. So I drilled out one of those, figured out I got the rivets for it, and we'll pull this thing apart and get it cleaned up. Alright, I got it. Just took a little persuasion, had a little rust between the two parts here. So I'm going to knock this bearing out and go sandblast this thing. So here are the two halves out of the sandblaster and they just need some paint, some rivets, put this back in there and should be looking marvelous. Well between these uh, parts you can see that's the one side, it's nice and clean, but on this side just to put down a protective coating I put a chrome paint on there. And these will go back together with the bearing in there. Now I'm put some chrome paint on there and that'll be all done.
there are several decisions I had to make on, on how to paint and what to paint. And I just decided to take those pulleys, even the variable speed pulleys, paint them all. And then use the chrome paint on this one like here. There's a couple using chrome paint. Here's one of those variable speed pulleys that I decided to paint both the inside and the outside of it. Well, I've been thinking about this and it's time to get this together and I think I know a good way of pressing it all in there. So let's give it a shot. On the other bearing, it looked like there was some, it was glued in there. So I put a little um, JB Weld down in there and hopefully that should be enough to press this in there and make it stay. I'm glad I did use that uh, JB Well because when I looked at the service manual it did say that they were uh, glued in with some kind of a glue. And there they are, ready to go on the tractor. A little scuffs on them, I'll have to do some touch-up painting. Well, got the parts laid out, and time to get that onto the tractor. I really couldn't remember how this stuff went on here, so I've been looking at my videos, looking at the... Uh, service manual and I got it dry fitted right now but I'm starting to think that some of these parts back here um, that are not protected with paint and I'm going to need to do some sort of, of protection of those parts I think I'll just put some light oil on it or some grease but I might paint it I'm, I'm still contemplating but now that I got it dry fitted, um, it also calls for in the service manual to lightly oil up these parts here. So I'm going to put some, some whey oil on it to uh, make sure that these parts are all lubricated up. And I got my little whey oil and I'm going to oil them all up. Now these bolts can't be seen, so it doesn't matter if there's a little contrast on this one or not. So what I'm going to do is just do a little black paint on the top of them just to prevent, uh, protect them, that is, from corrosion. They've all been tightened and cleaned and not a little, just a little dab, dab of paint. All right, I took the uh, belt back off of there just to do some work down here. But everything is nice and smooth on that uh, variable speed transmission. And now it's time to put this little thing together. Now to put cotter pins in. There's this little spacer that goes on here, and there's, I think there's two of them, and one wasn't on it when I took it apart, so I'll have to make one of these on the lathe. It should be a simple little project. And that goes on this little idler wheel. Went along with the guard and tightened up these two, and this side is complete. I, before I um, before I put the wheel on though, I am going to put some clear coat on here. But right now I'm going to concentrate on the other side, get that done, get them clear coated and get the wheels on. Clear coat on these 
fasteners. After reviewing the file footage, this is uh, the wrong bolt that goes in here. Um, this is one that needs the spacers and stuff for this spring, which is right here. So I'm going to take this one out. And I had just finger tightened that one because I wasn't sure where it went. Well, now I do. This goes down here. Now I got to figure out a way to muscle that thing down there without scratching things up. Muscle that spring down there. Yeah, I hate springs. Alright, I'll try it. This way. See if I can do it. I hate springs. <sighs> hate springs. Well, of course I get it after I stop the filming. But uh, there she is. I use this bolt, pull it up around, and got it on there. All right, so we continue. And still after further investigation, <laughs> it looked like it came off of there in the video, but now I'm looking at the book and the book looks like it's at even a different spot. So I'm gonna put it in the spot the book says. So we're gonna move the spring after fighting it on there, I fought it off and now I'm gonna put it where it goes. Ain't no way that can't go there. What on earth is going on? Got to figure this out. Now after all of that, I'm back in the original position. I went and looked at my video. I looked at, I looked at so many things and so many times trying to figure it out. And this is how it looks like it goes. The only thing is, is on the, on the other video, it shows these with the, the bolt head. Uh, on the inside, but I'm gonna leave it like that because I think it's more aesthetically pleasing looking at it like that If there's some kind of fouling issue with this then I'll flip it around, but right now that's how she looks so um, This side is all buttoned up. I still don't know what this is. I left it in here from when I deconstructed it uh, I have no idea what that is. I'm so I'm Still gonna leave that like that until I get her going Well looking at my videos I Notice there was a guard that went back here, and, and here it is. And as you can see, it's dented and not, <laughs> not restored yet. But that goes right here. So, I'm going to get this cleaned up, sandblasted. I'm going to take this downstairs and then get that bend out of it and get it painted. I'm really excited how this turned out. It is not perfect, but the... The major bends out of there and got it sandblasted, cleaned up, bent. Use the um, use my press downstairs. I used a hammer on some um, aluminum. Um, got it pretty good. So now I get it painted and hopefully get this this part back on. Trying to get this laid out to figure out how it went back together. I've got the manual there the parts and brought my laptop out to look at how I took it apart. I've watched this thing a hundred times, still trying to figure out how it went back together. This was almost five years ago when it came apart, so it's killing me. After a couple of hours of trying to figure that other stuff out, I knew that I saw something on the diagram that I couldn't find. Well, I found it, so this needs to be sandblasted and painted. And I found some of the other screws and spacers. 
So uh, I got to get this cleaned up and sandblasted and this painted. Then we'll get this thing together. Well, I'm going to get this thing up on his feet. So I'm going to throw a little more grease in her. And then we will. This is just to make sure the grease is topped off. All right, I see grease coming out of here. That's a good sign. Well, I was trying to figure out what on earth was going on. I knew that was a little close. And then this one was fouling on that fork there. Well, I put the rim on the other side on backwards. This is how it's supposed to do. The, the bad side is supposed to be pointing out. I should say the side that looks like it's supposed to go the other way. And there she is. The frame standing on her own two feet. I'm kind of excited about that. Trying my best to be organized here, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Got some hardware here. Kind of stuck this uh, lift lever thing on here for the implements with its two pieces. I'm going to try to get all the back end of this buttoned up. Uh, get the PTO on there and then get the, uh, the brake and the lift lever and the shifter on there and that'll tie up the whole back end and then I can uh, start working in uh, the middle section Here she is in all her glory. All the back end buttoned up. And sitting on dollies again so I can move her around easily. And now back to Tractor Chat. In color. Ooh, ooh. Hi, and welcome back to Tractor Chat's 50th annual John Deere Golden Three Point Hitch Award Show Spectacular. For those of you who are just tuning in, you've missed an outstanding award show. A lot of these coveted John Deere Golden Three Point Hitch Awards have been passed out, and now we are on our final category and our final award. And that category is normally aspirated single cylinder garden tractors in the low horsepower rating. And the nominees are Taylor Swift, 1965 Sears Suburban 10. 1,000 horsepower. Julia Roberts, 1971, Alice Chalmers 312, 1,000 horsepower. Jennifer Garner, 1980, Cub Cadet 680 Hydro, 1,000 horsepower. And finally, Adriana Lima, 1976, Wheel Horse 160, 1,000 horsepower. And the John Deere Golden Three Point Hitch Award goes to, I'm so nervous for them all, Jennifer Garner, 1980 Cub Cadet 680 Hydro. Wow, this is, this is such an honor. 
Jennifer Garner was not able to be with us today, but she did leave me her acceptance speech, and I would like to read that to you. I am so excited to win the John Deere Golden Three Point Hitch Award. I didn't expect to win, so I didn't prepare a speech. I have so many people to thank. You know, every little girl grows up fantasizing about walking down that green carpet and receiving the coveted John Deere Golden Three Point Hitch Award. I never thought it would happen to me, and I have so many people to thank. First of all, they're, they're telling me to speed it up. First of all, I'd like to thank my producers. Uh, th they're playing the music for me to wrap it up. Uh, well, before I thank anybody, I have to tell you, I have finally found the secret of life. The secret of life is so simple. All you have to do is... I bought a new cow to get some... A lot of these John Deere three-point hitch awards. As a little girl, all girls dream about being pretty enough and...